near future course of law goes super fast there's no jury just a judge gotta win in three days max my name is phoenix wright and i am an ace attorney so grab a seat move to the beat and join me on my journey i live in california and by that i mean japan got a suit in blue a big red tie and hair like gemini man it's a comedy of errors with a violence of Macbeth. so cute and charming murder Zany, wacky, jokey, death. I guess I meet all type of weirdos on my justice-seeking quest. The dudes are turtle, and the ladies have big... Here we go now. Sometimes, I don't watch or listen to things just to spite you. I know, so I... Meh. Let's hop into this game. I basically explained what it is and how it works. I'm Shala. Yeah. And I'm Pixel. Not parental floss like I might have led you to believe. I was gonna say you're defending attorney. Tank's empty. But first, uh, point of order. Today has been brought to you by Raid Shadow. I couldn't keep a straight face. Well, for many reasons. But there's one thing that, there, that I must bring to your attention. It's that you are an absolute wombat. Okay. You had it like sticking out of your ear like a weirdo. You give me alternating ones each and every time we record. What? Lies. I always give you lefty. <laughs> so, I've, uh,. In preparation for our let's play, I've been playing the games, so. Yep. Sounds like we're starting the first case on the first arc. Yep. One of my favorite characters from Henry Stickman. Mm. Phoenix, right? Yeah. Yeah. I understand that the Henry Stickman games all have a... A Phoenix Wright segment. They can, not all of them do. Yeah. Yeah. I sure do love uh, their pop co culture references that Henry Stickman. We'll play that next if anyone wants. I almost 100%ed the game. Yeah. There's just one character I can't click on to save my life. Alright, I'll be uh, Phoenix. Alright. Boy, am I nervous. I said to my wig Right? Right? Oh, uh, hi, Chief. Whew, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because That's I... Oh. You didn't guess. You didn't guess head. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe, you know, kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. 
it's over. Yeah. It's more like, it's over. My life, everything, it's all over. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's a death spare. Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to die. Sounds like he wants to die. Um, yeah. <sighs> Nick. Hey. Hey. Hey, Miller. Dude, I'm so guilty. Tell them I'm guilty. Give me the death sentence. I am afraid to die. What? What's wrong there? Oh, it's all over. I, I'm finished. Finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? No, me, me, me. Yeah, yeah. Newspaper said said it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. And I am here to be. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. The young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the young lucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. Her best friend since grade school. Our school saying was, when something smells, it's usually the butts. In 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say though, it's usually not his fault, he just has terrible luck. But I know, be know better than anyone that he's got a good heart. That he's a good guy at heart. That and I own one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm, what I'm going to do. Court is now in session for trial. Judge Mr. Santa Claus presiding. Mr. Larry Butts. Sorry, I got to the the point where there was another uh, judge, and he too also had a big bushy beard. So you know how in like British uh, court they wear the powdered wigs. Yeah. Powdered beards. Yeah. Just have it attach right under the lower lip, and at the filtrum. Grab, pull, facial waxing. Yeah. I say that out loud and now I feel pain. Mm -hmm. Especially on your face where you have the most delicate skin. Other than you, the other area. Yeah, we'll, we'll just gloss over that. Mm -hmm. You take this character. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The um, defense is ready, Your Honor. <coughs> <coughs> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y y yes, Your Honor. I'm a, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge for, serious charge. for your client's sake. I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank, thank you, Honor. Yeah. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Oh. Hands shaking, I, eyesight fading. Knees shaking, mom spaghetti. The test will consist of a, sim a few simple questions, answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Obviously, it's Lady Butts. The 
defend it. Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Phew, I know this one. Glad I read the case report covers it, to cover so many times. It's a... Uh, wait. Uh-oh. No. No way. I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim. Uh, of course I know the victim's name. I, uh, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the R button to check it at any time, okay? It's still you. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who's the victim in this case? Mia Fey, Cinder Block. Cindy Stone. Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now tell me what was the cause of death. She died because of... I guess she was... She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. As my Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Will you explain to the object just what the to the court what yeah. just what the object was? The murder weapon was this, the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue added to the court record. Right? Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. The evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the R button to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant Mr. Butts to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosti prostitution later, so be ready. Flip that on purpose. Freudian slips happen. Mm. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Madre de Dios. Ahem. Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were what we didn't do it. Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Uh, didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She was just make. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me ever. What's it to you anyway, Mr. Butts? You, what you described is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! 
All of it lies. I can't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris the day before she died. Passport added to the court record. Hmm. Indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof. Dude, Nick, what do you mean, irrelevant? That's she, that she and she, dog. I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, when I'm here in the afterlife, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the key. Yeah. I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not good looking. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Go. Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, he went. What did I do? We're gonna have him answer honestly. I know. I'll send him a single. Tell the truth. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was there. I went. I think uh, hiding the fact that he was he was there would be worse looking than telling the truth. Yeah. Order. Well, Mr. Butts. Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man. So like, I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. And I voice that because you're on your phone. Lying? That's my line. The prosecution would like to call a witness who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may cause witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank, Sh Frank Schwartz to the stand. <laughs> no, it's Frank saw it. It's creativity like that is wh why Sega is still making consoles. Please bring Mr. F Frank saw it to the... Mr. Saw it, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is this correct? Time to do my most weaselly voice. Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes. 
Mr. S uh, so Mr. Saul, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. In a second. I was going door to door, selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing in an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment, and I saw her there, lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to the nearby park and found a public phone. How do you think? What do you think of the voice? Wonderful. Thanks. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's why was it in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time the, of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Solid used was one of those. Your Honor? I have a record of the blackout for you for your perusal. Blackout? The court record? Added to the court record. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor. All right, right. This is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why you exposed the lies in the testimony of the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have the lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find the contradictions between the court records and the witness testimony. Then, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with the R button, then point out contradictions in the testimony. Yeah, I, we already know this guy's the killer because this one opened very Colombo style. Yep. I just. Oh. Fun health bar. Yeah. For those of you who don't think we're going to play through the entirety of this trilogy, you can take that, hold it, and object to it all you want, but it's happening. Yeah, I've been up. Uh, I played the first game. Because I'm going to get acquainted with it, and then I was like, wait, this game series is actually a lot of fun. So I went on to the other two games. You want to know which one my favorite is? What? The, the team up between Wright and Layton. Yeah. It has a couple unique things where you can examine multiple witnesses. Mm -hmm. And if you line them up right, they give you more information than... And the li liars expose each other. Yeah. 
I would believe. So, he, he didn't say anything about the statue. Yeah. Oh. 1 p.m.? I keep uh, clicking through the dialogue. Right. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. How would he know about the time if there was a blackout? Yep. Damn it! <sighs> yeah, I'm just gonna skip through all the error messages. About the... My bad. Right, we're gonna do... Unable to go inside. Are you sure she was dead? Well, well, no, I, I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all, and there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look fatal to anyone. Very well, what happened next? So, you didn't touch anything in the apartment. Uh... Yes, I mean, no, nothing. Okay, what happened next? The phone in her apartment wasn't working. Yes, I mean, no, no, it wasn't. What? But you said you didn't go into the apartment, or did you? Oh, yeah, that, I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on the shelf in the entryway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. And the phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? Why use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And being in the middle of the afternoon, there was no answer at the nearby apartments. Uh, wait. What time did you call again? Are you absolutely 100% positive? Yes, it was him. No, no mistake about it. The witness says he's certain. That's all, Sue. That's all of it. There must be a contradiction in there somewhere. Examine the court records with the R button. If something sh strikes you as being suspicious, then find the evidence that contradicts his testimony and present it to the court. Oh! Okay, I'm now. I know what it is. If it was one, then how could. If she died from four to five and like that. Then how could there have been one? Yes! You found the body at 1 p.m. You sure? Yes! It was at 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I found that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to uh, nobody to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three-hour gap? Uh, that uh uh. 
This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I found that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit, why were you so certain that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, er, well, er, Judy, that's a really good question. Good job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies al always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video taped of a, of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Hmm, I see. You heard a voice saying the time on a taped program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. You know what to do. I've got this one. Sorry, Mr. Sawyer, but no power means no TV. Are you sure it was a television and not a radio? Well, I guess it might have been a radio. Incidentally, there was no radio on the premises. There was only one large television. Right. I can't put my finger on it, but something about this seems fishy. Something about hearing the television? The witness has testified he heard, heard the time. Present the blackout yeah. schedule. Now the, the one tricky thing about uh, about this is like you can have the white evidence, but if you present it to the, the wrong statement, then it doesn't count. I uh. feel I think we'll feel we feel pretty good about this one. Yep. Is that... Yes. Oh, I always feel so good when the like the health bar slides off. Yep. Hold it right there. The presu me. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. You couldn't have heard a television or a radio radio. Yeah, I, well, er, the f defense has a point. <coughs> Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Solid? No, I, I found it quite puzzling myself. Quite. Ah, well, wait, I remember now. Mr. Solid, the court would, would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That and you seem rather distraught. But my apologies, Your Honor. It or it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Solid. Let's hear your testimony one more once more, please. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment. Wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. 
The defense may cross examine the witness. Gladly. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, of course when we had a picture of the crime scene. Actually, I didn't hear it. I saw it. There's a clock, table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? I hold your antenna. And then press on two and three. A table clock. Was was there a table clock at the scene? This is the first I've heard of it. Yeah, the murder. The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock that was used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Something's fishy here. As we can both see, this is a, a statuette and not a convert. Yep. And not a regular table clock. Present. Yes. Wait just a moment. The, mo the murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now how is this supposed to be a clock? What? Y you with your adjustments and evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Solit. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue was, is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright? It appears that the test that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this with his testimony now? Yes. Your Honor, there's a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the clock was the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified test, mm, testified, testified he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Hmm, indeed. You you said contra and I love that we're just slipping games and jokes in. Yes. Completely on purpose. Completely on Echo the Dolphin. The witness knew it was a clock because he went to the apartment. You're lying. You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Uh, oh yeah? Prove it. Prove I went in there. I'll do better than that. I can prove you were the one who killed her. You stuck her, struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order, order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Saw it. The sound must have left it. Left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder we weapon just spoke. It spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. What? What's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless. Just look at the witness's face. 
Do the the nerd voices from the yeah. Uh, the yeah. uh, nerd sounds from the substances. <laughs> Were the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I that day, I I never look. I the clock. No, I heard. No, I mean I saw. <laughs> Shut up, shut up, shut up. I hate you. It, it was him, I tell you. I saw him. He, he killed her and he should burn. Burn. Give him death. Yes. Give him death. Me. <laughs> Order. Order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. White, Your yeah. Honor, you claim the sound the vit the the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I better think carefully about it carefully. Your Your Honor. Sound Mr. Saw it heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear of you simply. Well, Try sounding the clock. Yeah. Let's sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So we heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the dis discrepancy between Mr. Saw it or Mr. Saw it heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Saw it, talk, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha! Ah, well, <laughs> you forgot one thing. Uh oh, what's he trying? talking about now. Why it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing. How do you know it's running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. That's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I'm so close. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence that to support your claim. Yes, yes, Your Honor. That means I. That means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the cross examination of Mr. Frank Sawyer. I came all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal. You lawyers are all slime. For <laughs> her. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. Nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Solid. Yeah, I mean, Chief. Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow on the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out, out of the box. Don't waste your time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? 
Figure out the reason and you'll have all all your proof. Right? Right? <laughs> right? Right! Dun 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 Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Wait, maybe I can prove it. You must have the evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. There's a piece of evidence in the court that can prove my claim about beyond, beyond the a shadow. doubt. Ha! Tough words. Let's see, you prove this one off. I'm gonna take a second. Let's see this evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. See the the passport. Yep. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock, w clock. The clock wasn't running it wasn't 3 hours slow. It was 9 hours fast. The... the the victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sart? Or should I say, Mr. Did It? Yeah. Yeah. Order, 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 I say. Well, this case has turn certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He, er, he was arrested and had been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, not guilty. And with that, the court is adjourned. It turns out that Frank Sart was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, while Larry went out to went to their apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sart left let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Phew! I th I still can't believe we won. Alright. Good job in there. Congratulations. Th thanks, Chief. I owe it to all to you. Not at all. Not at all. You fought your own battle in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. 
I've never seen the chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Aw, oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good, wait, no, I mean, bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but I Cindy Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry was, she was. Never mind. Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. Uh, Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. <laughs> um, thanks. I already owe you one. I won't forget this hour. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Oh no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, oh hey! Y here, take this. It's a present. Present for me? Wait. Oh. Wasn't. Wait. Wasn't this the evidence that. Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You. You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick, and she was just playing me for a fool. Doesn't that make you just want to cry? Larry? Hmm. Are you so sure? Uh, excuse me? I think that she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not sympathizing, really. It's just that... Right. Don't... Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Uh, oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? He was clearly thinking about you. With her passport! With my attorney's bitch. Answers. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This, this is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed a clock. That's all. Think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to t take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I have. Thanks! Hope that made him feel a little better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize that things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And, and in order to believe them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me. We'll drink a toast to the innocent butts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Perry. You were saying part of why you became a... A lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah. Part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Maybe over tequila body shots?
when the when she said food uh, dinner on me uh, and I stuck it literally on her. And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us, unless you count the clock he gave me. A... I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise I, w that I wouldn't be able to keep. 